So I want to give you all an update on what's going on with my fridge freezer thing. Te so I'm trying to test out because I have an Apple Cool fridge that I bought like a while ago. And I tested it out of my apartment and when it was plugged into the wall, it worked fine. But then it was plugged into my battery. It was using way too much power. And I could not at that time troubleshoot the issue because I was getting rid of all of my stuff and moving out of my apartment and moving my son off to college. And it was just too many things. So I stuck it in my storage and now here we are. Now I'm trying to figure out how to get this thing to work and figure out is it is something wrong with my battery? Is something wrong with the fridge? Is this just the way it is? You know, and figuring out how I can troubleshoot this so it is realistic to have this in my car. So I, a lot of people, including people I know in real life, as well as people here on YouTube, have said, oh, well, what you should do is use that fridge as a freezer, freeze water bottles, and then put that water bottles in your soft cooler, which I have up here. And then it's like you have this perpetual motion machine kind of thing for ice. And so I was like, you know, that would be a really neat idea because then I could have both a fridge and a freezer or a cooler and a freezer. So I wanted to test that out first. So what I did was yeah, I had someone I know freeze up a whole bunch of water bottles. So I would start out with frozen stuff in the cooler and then also pre-cool the cooler plugged into the wall. So then I took that took my battery at 100% and plugged it in and put it in my car to test it out in kind of real conditions. It, so the short version is it used way too much power for it to be sustainable. I wouldn't be able to keep up with charging the battery. Now, I wanted to make sure, is this something wrong with my battery or is it the fridge drawing too much power? Like, I want to make sure that my battery wasn't having a problem. So I charged the battery up to 100%. I updated the firmware. It actually had two firmware updates. So that was an important thing to do anyway. And then I reset the battery and then I'm letting it rest overnight so it can balance the things or whatever. I don't know what it is, but there's like stuff that you do. So it's doing that. I always had actually having a problem with the battery before, but I wanted to do all the things that you, that you would do. And yes, I've charged up to 100% down to zero and all that stuff. I've done that too. So meanwhile, I plugged in somebody else's battery. So back here, I have the fridge freezer plugged into an Anchor battery, the Anchor 757. It's like their super fancy, nice new one. And what I found is at free with this battery, which I definitely trust is not having any problems. It uses 25% of this battery in five hours. So that works out to be about five amps per hour to freeze. And that's way too much power for me to be able to keep on top of. Now, if someone has a, you know, multiple lithium batteries, like they're in a van and they actually have like a, a system, you know, they have multiple lithium batteries and they have, have solar on their roof and, you know, then that would totally work. And drawing around, like it says it draws 40 watts, but I'm actually finding it draws more like 60 for the freezer, at least to run the freezer. It says it draws 45 watts. I'm sorry. So it draws 45 watts and I'm finding it's more actually like 60 watts considering because what happens is, is that I don't know how they base the watts on what voltage because one of the big things is everyone uses watts but really we should be using amps to calculate everything because the problem is watts really depends upon the voltage and how much voltage is actually coming out of the battery actually does change over time so anyway with this configuration is using five amps an hour which is still too much which is too much for using a freezer so i turned that off also another thing i found is i laid down next to it last night and it was still on i was going to leave it on overnight and it was putting out so much heat the freezer was putting out so much heat it was bothered it was like setting me off with hot flashes and i was like that doesn't work now I can literally just switch it around so the venting is by the door. That actually may be better because because of just the way the door is shaped, there would inherently be a space there because it can't be right next to the door. So I think that actually would be a better thing, but it's right there. It's fine right this second. So then this morning, I switched over to be running it as a fridge. Now, interestingly enough, it hasn't even kicked on at all in the last hour because it's full of stuff that's still mostly frozen. It's so it's going to take a little while before it actually gets to a point where everything in it is not no longer frozen. <laughs> like right now it's acting as a, as a cooler, but once it actually comes to equilibrium, then we will see how much power it takes that way as wanting it as a fridge. Now there's other alternatives I could do. Getting more power is just not realistic because getting more power would require a bigger battery literally in size and I don't have space for that. And also I don't really have the ability to charge up a much bigger battery because the thing is solar on the roof of a Honda Civic with 
a window up here is just not realistic. I would, I would have to get one of those ones that stick on. It wouldn't be very much. And I'd have to park in the sun for that. And I never park in the sun. I, I 100% avoid parking in the sun. I always park in the shade. So I do have a solar panel. It's actually not even in the car right now, but I will take it with me when I'm traveling. I do have a solar panel that I can plug in to whatever to charge it, but it's only 120 watts. It's actually, it actually can, it's actually very efficient. It can go up to, I've seen, gotten, gotten 110. I've even seen a little bit more than that come out of it. So it's a good solar panel, even though it's some total off brand. It's linked down below if you want to look at it. I actually really like it because it has every single plug. So that's like built into it. So you don't have to worry. Is it compatible with thing? Yeah, it's got all the plugs. So whatever battery you happen to have, whatever like thing you want to plug it into, it should be fine. So I'm going to test it with running it as a fridge and see if I can manage the power that way. I think running it as a freezer is just unrealistic. It requires too much power because it makes sense, right? Like at room temperature, let's just say it's nice and it's 75 degrees. Well, if you're growing from 75 to 40 for a fridge, that's one thing. 75 to, I was putting it at 14, that's a lot more like energy it's going to take to lower it from 40 to 14. So I think running it as a fridge is much more realistic thing to try to troubleshoot. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do. Today is Sunday. I leave on my trip on Friday. So between today and Thursday, I'm going to work on trying to troubleshoot. How do I generate enough power? How do I, is, is this going to work? What insulation? Do I, need? I mean, I have insulation and I have access to what's that reflective stuff, you know, so I can build like a little thing for it or I can even buy something, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it would be worth it if I was able to, <laughs> you know, get this to work. I could buy some of uh, thing for it. Um, there's probably off market ones. This one, this fridge has been around for five years. So I'm sure there's all kinds of different things that have people have actually created that you can buy as well as I can build something out of reflectix and insulation and stuff to help it be more efficient. Where does it need to sit in the car? You know, all these different kinds of things. But fundamentally, I want, I'm my Right now, I'm thinking the freezer just doesn't work in this situation. It would just run too much. It heats up the car too much when I'm sleeping and also just is annoying. So I'm going to try to see if I can get the fridge version of it to work. And that's going to be between the next for the next five days, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If I can't troubleshoot that, then I'll just put it in my storage and I'll go with my current system for my next trip. And then I'll work on it again when I get back. I don't I'm not going to buy anything else right now i could there now there are new even apicool has some new really really small fridge freezers that on eco only draw like 30 or 35 watts so i think it's 30. so like that may make a big difference one of the things i've learned is since i have zero refrigeration if i have any refrigeration or any freezer like it would make a huge difference just to be able to have a couple things you know so you know it, like if i could just have some keep some vegetables some longer if i could just be able to buy lunch meat you know just like i buy buy ground meat to be able to cook with you know just a few things would make a huge difference uh and so yeah that would be that would make a big difference if i had even if it was like this little little tiny amount of fridge even so that's the next step if i can't get this to work then i would look doing that because they're actually really cheap they're like 130 dollars or something like that and i could get that when i get back and, and try to troubleshoot that at a lower power draw because that's one thing i think people don't I don't see people, I mean, there are definitely people talking about this, but I see people having troubles with all their power stuff. And I think it's really important to always remember, it's not just about how big is your battery or, and how get a big enough battery to run this thing. It is about managing all the different parts. It's about managing how much draw is it? Maybe you need to get something that has a lower draw. How much battery storage do you have? And then also managing the generation and when I'm in a, you know, when you're in a car this small, I don't have space to bring a gazillion solar panels. I don't have space on my roof for all kinds of stuff. I don't have space for, I don't like, I can't have a generator, right? If I was in an RV, you can have a generator, you know? So like, there's a lot of things that just are not very realistic in here. And then now one of the things that I actually am learning from this is I would rather have my own built system. It's, I don't think it'd be very realistic to do in the car. I mean, I actually was talking to my significant other last night, because by the way, my significant other is an electrical engineer. So I have a consultant 
who is helping me figure out all these things. And I'll be talking to them and they'll be like doing all the calculations in their, in their head. And I'm just like, uh, so there's like, well, you know, we could, we could build something <laughs> like, I don't know. If I'm like thinking that's a realistic thing to do in a car, if we did, it would be underneath the platform. You know, is there a way to put in lithium batteries and a solar thing and a thing like all those things underneath here? I mean, that would be like so crazy and it's overbuilt. All right, I need to go ahead and eat my breakfast. I actually got McDonald's because I didn't realize I have zero bre uh, protein bars. I was like, oh, and I, this is free because I had points, which tells you how often I go to McDonald's, which is actually something I'm trying to work on, which is part of the reason for my motivation to try to figure out this fridge thing so I can have a more variety of food. Now, I do plan to add more variety of food anyway. I have like, I have a box that's actually at my significant other's house that has all this food for my, my old apartment's pantry. I have lentils and beans and like all kinds of things in there that are shelf stable that I could totally cook with. I just haven't incorporated that, like literally put it in my car yet, you know? So before I go on my trip, I will be bringing a bunch of those things. I mean, things like dried beans would be great. I just need like a jar to soak them in. Uh, and, and then I could make, you know, use, um, one serving of beans and the same thing, like lentils are even easier. You don't need to soak lentils. I could easily use that. So like, I have a lot of things I can have access to that are shelf stable that I could add a lot more variety in my diet. And if I'm, when I'm traveling, I feel like it will be a lot easier. I found that when I was traveling on my last two trips that I've done so far, it's easier to cook when I'm on the road. It is easier to generate power when I'm on the road because I'm driving, you know, or I'm parked somewhere and at a campground and I throw up my solar panel. So I actually think that I'll, when I'm out in, you know, the woods, when I'm out in the desert, when I'm out in the mountains, I find all this to be actually easier to manage than when I'm in town. In town, in some ways, is the hardest thing. The only thing that's easier in town is I've access to my storage. I've access to my significant other, which is great. And then also, which sounds weird, like my, my they're like a thing I have access to. But you know what I mean. I have support from people here. And I have access to Planet Fitness so I can take a shower. Oh, speaking of Planet Fitness taking a shower. So I go in there to take a shower and I'm getting my stuff out and I'm already like in my robe. I wear a robe, by the way. And I don't know why other people don't, but they're like struggling with a towel. It's like robes are not expensive. You can get something off of Amazon. It's super cheap. But anyway, I'm wearing my robe. So I'm like ready in the shower and I realize I have no towels in my bag. No towels. They're in here. Like right here next to me. Because my car was such a mess because I kind of, since I put the fridge freezer and the battery and all this stuff in here and I had to rearrange everything I didn't realize that I hadn't put the towels back in my bag because I put them in the car to like undrape them around so they dry during the day so I had to use my dirty laundry that I just taken off to dry off myself and and at least get most of the wetness out of my hair and I'm like I don't think that's good <laughs> it's like what are you gonna do all right anyway I'm gonna eat my breakfast talk to you later I went grocery shopping, got my protein bars for tomorrow, and then I got things actually put in my cooler. Some turkey breast that was on sale, and then one of these salads, which I actually really like. And I'm going to put them in here, and then we will see how that goes. So right now it is, yeah, it's actually really cold still because there's so much frozen stuff in there. I don't think this is kicked on. Okay, so I decided that since I'm I'm testing out this fridge. I want to actually put a few things in it. I'm not going to buy, like, I'm not going to stock up because at any time I may decide, oh, this isn't working or I have to switch something around or whatever. But for right now, I am testing it out. So I bought some lunch meat and I have some bread. I'm going to need to buy more bread, but at least I'm going to start with lunch meat. And I bought a salad for me to eat today. So the, the idea is I'm buying food for like today and, and you know, very short term right now because I don't want to waste anything. I have to throw out anything. I'm also going to go in my little fridge up here and put some stuff back in there. I'm going to put my mayonnaise packets because even though the mayonnaise packets are shelf stable, I would like them better if they were gold. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put that in there. And I don't have anything else in here that's like desperate to go in there. Like it's, you know, it'd be nice to have the mustard in there, but it's going to be fine. Uh, there's some other things that are supposed to go into a fridge, but they don't actually have to go in there like like hot sauce and stuff. So anyway, 
I'm going to test out how this goes. This is not my battery, so I'm gonna switch that out as soon as my significant other is up and, and I go over and switch out the batteries, and then I'm going to work on that. So what I'm actually thinking as far as how it's gonna work logistically with charging it, from the car, uh, obviously it'll be different when I, I'm using solar panels, but from the car is I have two 12 volt plugs. So what I'm planning to do is the front one will switch out. So it'll first start out just charging my battery for my CPAP. That's the number one priority. And then it doesn't take that long to charge it up if I do it every day, if I just top it off every day. So then what I'll do is then I'll switch that out and charge my phone and my fan and like the other, you know, USB type things. And that'll be over the rest of the time that I'm driving in that particular day. And then the back 12 volt one, which is in, in the center console, I'll use that for the battery for the fridge. My thought is, is to do it as pass through. So to actually use this plug to charge the battery and then the battery charges the fridge because not charges the fridge, runs the fridge. Because if I just like, I, I can't use both of these things for that system. <laughs> I need one of them for my other systems. And then that back one I'll use for that system. So that's my current theory. Obviously, when I'm out not driving anywhere, then I'll need to use solar to, and I actually kind of don't have enough solar. So I'm really gonna have it figured out how that's gonna work. I don't know. I think most of the time I'm gonna go from place to place for right now. It may be that in the future, I need more solar than just 120 watts. You know, that battery that I have, it's either 300 or 400 watts that you can hook up to it. So, you know, one other thing I could do is get another panel that's like a 200 and something watt panel and then run them both together. And then that way, I'd only bring that second panel with me when I need it with me. So I don't have to have it all the time. I don't know. I'm going to end up with more stuff in my car. Like right now you see there's a lot of stuff in my car up here. I was planning on switching stuff around when I go on my trip anyway, and my clothes are going to go in here. Right now, the soft cooler is in here. If I end up with the fridge, what I'm going to do is a soft cooler is going to be for my sauces and oils and vinegars and and um, spices. I have so many. I have an entire container of spices that is not in the car. And so my plan is to get bring some, uh, some more of those with me so I can have more you know, variety of how things taste and putting them in here. I think we keep them since they're all like glass, you know, they kind of need to be. And then also the things is since it's hot enough, it's just a really good thing to keep my oils and vinegars and things like that in at least the stuff that doesn't need to actually go in the fridge. And most of my stuff doesn't at this point because I got rid of all the stuff that does like sriracha sauce or whatever. And I actually really like the sriracha powder. I think I might just keep with that instead of using sriracha sauce just to save room in my fridge for other things that can only go in a fridge. All right. We'll see how that goes today. I was going to go to the park, but the park is really busy. There's some event going on. So I, I think I'm just going to go somewhere to go to the bathroom and then I'll head over to the part of the world that has a library. Oh, I need to also go to my storage unit today. So right now I'm going to put this on here during the day. So if the sun is ever shining in here, it's getting that reflection off. So we'll see if that makes a difference. I'm parked in, on a random street. There's actually an interstate highway right there, but it's on the other side of a fence and all that stuff. I want to kind of look at everything inside this car in the cabin and look at what would go in the trunk and what needs to stay in here now that this, the fridge and everything is there. The cooler, like I said, I'm thinking of putting all my spices and oils and vinegars and stuff in there, which is, it has that in there anyway, because I'm gonna add a lot more spices from my actual spice cabinet, spice container, and this will go in the trunk. Okay, so this battery stays up here. My CPAP battery is gonna stay up here because I would need to charge it. These towels need to go actually in my bag. So I have them to take a shower tomorrow. So I'm not having to use dirty laundry to take a shower because that's not cool. So I can get this all right away and put back in the back. And then I have some clothes from yesterday. So that also can go back there, right here. Food. I do not need food, I, like snacks, I do not need to be up here. That's me in the back. Where's the clip for this? In my cup holder, I have, I keep my extra clips after I use something and take them off and then it's easy to find them. Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to refill my meds. Where's my organizer? I need to write that down. That when I go to storage, I need to refill meds, put away fundamentally put away a whole bunch of things into my storage that are in my car that don't need to go in the car. Oh, I also need 
more tissue. I'm on the last tissue and I keep, I buy, you know, multiple ones at a time and keep them in my storage. But one thing I like to have is I'd like to have a checklist for when I'm going on a trip, like what I need to get out of my storage and then what goes back in my storage. I used to, when I used to go car camping, like, and lived in an apartment, I would have a checklist that I would print out. I had everything checked out and it was super organized. I loved it so much. However, number one, I don't have a printer, but also, I don't think this could actually go up here. Um, but also I need to develop a new list. That list won't work anymore because it was for when I lived in an apartment. What else is in here? Oh, here's the clip. All right, so let's put that back. Sweatshirt we're gonna put in here too for right now, even though I don't want it to go in there. So then here, um, this is gonna go inside that other container. This notebook I actually need to keep out here. Those two I don't, this I don't. So this can all go in my storage. I may actually do this while I'm traveling. So I'm gonna keep that out here. And then that's, this is going in storage. That should go over here. Then I have that organizer. And so what I'm planning to do is go to the dollar store and I have that nice blue or like container thing that has got a bunch of stuff in it that I actually do mostly want that stuff in the car. So it has my stuff that I use to do dishes, my spray bottle, my soap thing, sprayer, and it has, it has lotion with a pump on the top, you know, and it has bug spray, it has salt and pepper, a bunch of, and then it has my cephaly device. It has my mouth guard for sleeping at night. It, my eyeglasses case is now in there. It's got a whole bunch of different things, but I can't fit this or anything like this in there and also have the current organizer thing. So what I'm gonna do is go to the dollar store where they have all kinds of organizers, super cheap, and get different organizers to fill that up. So that's one of the things I'm gonna do today is reorganize that because that can fit back there with all this stuff. But this can't also fit, so I'm gonna put this inside of it. And I can still reach everything back there, so that, that's totally fine. Cause I wanna be able to reach it when I'm here in the car. And there's actually like, I have another fan that I never use. I think it's better for me just to have one fan and just focus on making sure it's charged than to have many, many, many different fans. That little fan that I got that's in my purse, it's probably, probably still in my purse. I might've gotten it out. Lost charge really fast. It was very disappointing. It loses charge while sitting in my purse. I wasn't able to use it for hot flashes. I was really excited about it. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna go put the stuff in the trunk and then what time is it? Oh, I have a watch now. It is almost nine o'clock. So I could totally go to the storage room. It opens at eight. Then I could take a lot of the stuff to the storage room. The library doesn't open until noon, which is obviously fine. Um, I have my salad and I have lunch meat. So that's kind of a fun, nice little thing today. Getting me excited about trying to figure out how to get the fridge to be functional for my life. So I can have a sandwich over lunch or first lunch, second breakfast, whatever, the next meal that I'm gonna eat, or I can eat my salad, depending upon how I feel. I really do wanna get back to eating salads because shall we say that is best for my digestion and I can tell that I haven't been eating salads and my digestion is not quite as functional. Sometime I'll do a video where I get into like all the details of grossness. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to do that separately because I don't want to talk about every kind of detail of things on a regular video because that would bother some people. So I'm thinking I'll have like a breakout Q&A about all the things about bathroom things and fluids, shall we say, and sex and all the kind of things that you kind of want to put in a separate video because I actually probably have to tag them as being not advertiser friendly. You know what I mean? So that'll all be separate. I'm trying to feel positive about the fridge and be excited about trying to figure it out and know that I have five days to figure it out. And if I can figure it out, then I can have a fridge. Now, one thing that actually is kind of cool is that Yellowstone, which is the first big leg of my trip, the first three, the, I mean, I'm going to be going on the way there. So this is the beginning of my trip, but first chunk of my trip, it gets down to like 30 something degrees at night. So I won't have to deal with the car like heating up. On the way there, I'm gonna be driving through, you know, Nevada and everything, and there will be places where it will be warm, but during the day. But even there at night, it'll probably pull off. I'm planning to camp in dispersed camping or stealth camping between here and Yellowstone, going to either like, you know, just rest stops or, or whatever along the way, or actually real dispersed camping. Probably Nevada, I'll do that. The only time I'm actually kind of worried is when I get close to Yellowstone, there'll be a point where it be, might be hard to find places because you're really close to a national park. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not worried about stuff in you know Nevada or whatever, like 
the middle of the desert. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the rest of my day. Later. All right, so the first thing that I've gotten out of my fridge to eat, salad that I bought this morning, and it's nice and cold. So I'm trying to like always remember, this is worth it. Doing it with the hassle of this and figuring this out is worth it. So you can have nice, fresh, cold food. Okay, we have this mess here that needs to be all consolidated. I got some containers from the dollar store for that. And then I might, well, whichever ones I don't use for this, I'm gonna put in the fridge to organize stuff in the fridge and I'll probably get some more too. Okay, this little spot is much better. So now I have all my random things that I need back there. And there's actually some room there for some more notebooks that are actually in my book bag right now. Then this has space with a bunch of breathing room on the sides of it for the battery. And then I have some things that need to go somewhere else. So I have put my iced tea in the new fridge. So I'm gonna let that come out of temperature. It might actually be the fridge to kick on. It had so much frozen stuff in there that the fridge hasn't even kicked on yet. It's kind of funny. So I have also, this cooler is under the scenario will go on my trunk and have my spices and oils and stuff. Right now it's in my car because I have, I need to kind of reorganize my trunk. But it was kind of a big mess of stuff thrown in there. So mostly because I have a ton of dirty laundry and I'm very due to do laundry. Today's Sunday. So tomorrow I will probably do laundry first thing in the morning. I think that should work out fine. I might do one last little laundry on Thursday before I go, just to like have everything be clean. Um, but tomorrow will be my big little laundry. I was actually hoping I could get through, but I actually don't actually have enough light enough clothes. So up here, and then this will go into my storage unit. And this this fan was great when I had an office, but I don't really use it now. It is. Um, it also takes a long time to charge. I think it's better just to have one fan. I think we'll have to stay up here a lot of the time. My my fan that I actually use stays up here, it charges during the day. So the only other things that I think I need to get for my trip is substrate for my new toilet situation. And I'm getting the cover for the fridge and I might actually even add more insulation like to it, but I'm gonna start out with that new cover for the fridge and I think that will make a difference. I have my insulation that's in my storage that I used in some places in the car, like up in here. And I'm, that is the sheep's wool. And so I may add that to the cover, like especially on the top to insulate it even extra and give it a little bit more R factor. I need to do that. And really, I don't think I'm gonna need to buy anything else for the trip besides food, assuming the fridge works. And the main things I'm doing this week is figuring out the fridge and getting the best fridge situation and work and packing. Tomorrow, I wanna go ahead and do, I will be doing laundry and yeah, just keep moving forward and everything. I went to Trader Joe's to motivate myself to be excited about the fridge. The but so I got pepper and onion because now I can actually save the rest of the onion. Obviously I got crackers and protein bars and stuff. But I got vegan butter. I got ground beef, sour cream, cream cheese, guac tortillas and tortillas tend to go bad very fast in a car so i actually put them in the fridge so so uh, i mean i was out of store this evening so i have stuff to make tacos and this is at least three servings of, uh, for me to eat so i'm now motivated to to get out my propane stove and cook and, and all that stuff so my original plan was to like get the cooler completely like worked out and before I bought food and put it in it, but I realized I need to let motivate myself. So I want to get the fridge to actually work and I'm willing to put in the time and energy for it. And also I need to get my propane stove out of storage, get my propane and then make sure it works and get my, all my cooking stuff and kind of switch all that stuff over. And I want to do that before I leave. So that way I can test it, make sure the, the stove actually works. I don't need to buy a new one or fix it, which is what I'd actually hopefully would do. It's a Coleman stove that's decades old. So it's better than the ones that are sold today in the sense of it's sturdy. However, it does not have a click, click, click thing. So you have to light it with a lighter. It never had a click thing. <laughs> it's it's from a long time ago, but that's fine because the click, click, click thing can not work. And then you don't have a lighter, you have troubles, right? Anyway, so I got stuff to make tacos, to make beef tacos, which I haven't had in a long time. It's such a filling thing that I enjoy eating and I don't wouldn't want to eat it all the time. Trader Joe's ground beef is pretty inexpensive. I think you can get more ground beef 
less expensive at Walmart in the frozen section. But besides that, it's a great price for there. My thought is that today or tomorrow, I'm going to make tacos, go to a park and make tacos. And that will be a nice thing. I also got sour cream. because I could have made tacos before. Sour cream would have been the thing I couldn't have. And I got guac and then I got, you know, chips and stuff. Trader Joe's had starting to have their fall things. So I got the fall chips. These are actually really good. They cut their, they don't cost more than the regular potato chips, but they do on a ounce basis because the regular bag of potato chips are 16 ounces. These are 14. However, look at these. Are, aren't these so much fun? They are so much fun and they actually do taste different and interesting. They have like tomato powder, powder, carrot powder, pumpkin powder, which I hate pumpkin, but we're going to pretend that's not in there. And yeah, it just makes them fun. They taste and beet powder to make it for the color, paprika for the color, trace of lime. So they actually have like a little bit of taste. So I have those with guac. I didn't get any cheese this time because I thought I have enough dairy in there. But yeah, that, and I also got this chive onion sour cream that I use with crackers. So I got some noun crackers. So I got a bunch of things that are treats for me. And I did that so I am very motivated and excited about the fridge and working it out. So right now the fridge still has a whole bunch of ice in it effectively. It has water bottles that have been frozen. I took these though out. Um, these belong to my significant other. They actually are all still frozen, but they don't fit now that I'm putting food in there. I mean, they, I could have piled on top. Was... One thing that was great this morning was my iced tea was cold. It was actually iced tea. And I don't have ice, which I don't actually like ice in my drinks because it makes it's too cold for my tea. But I had cold iced tea which was better than room temperature iced tea. Um, I'm, room temperature is fine. It, it's totally fine, but cold, yeah, cold is definitely better. So, and I have my lunch beat in there. I only have two more pieces of rye bread. So I only have one more sandwich worth, which I'll eat today. So today I already did the laundry. I haven't put it away. It's all beautifully stacked. I mean, not beautifully, but good enough stacked. So today I want to, I'll, I'll go to the library later and do work and go through all my inboxes and all that kind of stuff. I have work emails to return. But besides that, my thing I want to do is go to my storage and get out my propane stove and also like a pot and stuff like that. And then get go get the propane, which is at in the garage of my significant other because you can't put that in your storage. It's not okay. And go somewhere and cook something. I, I mean, I might, before I even go somewhere and cook something, I might just test it out in the driveway of my significant other just to make sure it works before I, I don't want to get stuff out and everything. I can cook this food up with electric, but then I'm using the, stealing the electric from my fridge and I don't want to do that. I want to just have my fridge be on its own little system. And then my CPAP, it's on its own little system and then everything else gets charged at the library or from my car. That's what I'm doing right now, just so I figure out how much energy does my fridge take. It cools off so much at night. And if I keep my car parked in the shade, like the fridge doesn't have to do a lot of work. Now, right now it's doing zero work. This is actually something that's very interesting. So the fridge has not turned on in a day, an entire day. And it had a bunch of ice in there for, you know, these things and frozen water bottles. It must have a good enough insulation to act as a cooler. I didn't think it would. I didn't think it would. So I'm very happy about that because that means if for some reason my battery system is out or whatever, I could go buy a bag of ice and use the fridge as a cooler for a day or two while I'm figuring out what to do about the battery, you know, or maybe I can't charge a battery. It's, it's, I'm not going anywhere or it's taking too long or something's wrong with it or whatever. I can use the fridge as a cooler. So I actually feel a lot better about that because then it's like a backup. My, it's in my an inherent backup plan. So I'm really glad about that. I may, that reduces my stress a lot. So this week I got a lot of stuff to do to get ready for my trip. So I'm planning to leave on Friday at the latest. I've set aside Thursday to be prepped for the trip day. I may do another load of laundry just so I have 100% of everything washed. Tomorrow, I do have one client call at least so far. So really, mostly what I'm doing this week is prepping for the trip and work. I need to get a flu shot. I need to get my oil changed. I need to file my California tax returns because I did my federal ones because I was getting a refund, but I wasn't getting a refund for the California, so I just didn't do it because I have an automatic extension until October because I was in a disaster zone. So I hadn't done it yet. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do it. It's due in October and I won't be back yet. Obviously I test the propane stove. I need to buy fuel for my jet boil. I have a jet boil that I got years ago for backpacking. I actually really like using that for boiling water for coffee or whatever. So I need to get some more fuel for that. So I have a backup fuel because it's like, I, you might be able to buy jet boil style fuel stuff 
places. I don't know. I actually have to like look into that. I need to make a packing list so I don't forget anything that I need because I won't be back here for a long time. And yeah, I'm pretty much just, I need to back up my laptop because I'm not going to bring my backup hard drive. I'm not, you know, I want to do that now before I leave. I need to edit and put and upload videos for this channel. So I have enough, like I'm not going to upload again till I get back. So I'm going to upload like weeks worth of stuff because I'm, I might upload when I'm in New Mexico because I could use my significant other owns a piece of land there that has a house on it that they um, lease to one of their relatives. And so I could probably use their internet to upload things. I don't know how fast it is though. And yeah, then a lot of stuff, but I'm so far I'm feeling good. And I say that that's relevant because my significant other called me this morning and they're sick and I saw them last night. So we'll see if I, I get sick or not. Okay, so I got not only my propane, but I also got my lentils. And lentils are a great way to extend something like a ground beef or a ground turkey or whatever and get a whole bunch more servings out of it. And, but you still have the ground beef taste, you know what I mean? And so, I, not that I don't like lentils, but if I just eat lentils for my protein, it's too much carbs. So it's a way for me to kind of have a balanced thing that extends it without having too many carbs and I still get to eat tortillas. I thought I had a Coleman, so I thought I had a Coleman stove, but it's a century stove. It is made in the USA. So we're going to see if this still works. It's also a bit dirty. Yay, it still works. Okay, so I'm all set up to cook, but there are bees bothering me. And I thought they were just going to be on one side, so I moved over here, and now the bees have come over here. I don't know. I'm not, I really don't want to be at cooking with bees. Like, that's just not interesting to me. Now, can you see them? Like, they're all about it. They're crawling on the food. I mean, all I have out is right now is an onion. And they're super excited about it. I mean, it's an onion. Like, it's not even meat or anything yet. So, yeah, I'm going to put everything away. I'm going to go somewhere else. And I'm really hungry, but I'm not into that. Okay, the bees are leaving me alone. So, I'm going to make in my tacos. I haven't met with the taco stuff in it yet. But right now I'm just browning the beef and get, cooking the onions and peppers. And then I think I'm going to make it, though, as a bowl with these chips. I think that'd be kind of more fun. And then I'll have tacos on other days. Well, I spoke too soon. Now they are flying around. I'm assuming they're bees. They could be wasps, but they look pretty small. I don't know. If they're attracted to meat, it makes me think they're wasps. Yay, actually have food. So was it worth it? Yes. It was so good and so satisfying with the ground beef and the sour cream. I actually didn't land lentils because the bees were stressing me out or wasps or flying things that might bite me. It's not attracted to the meat so much it makes me think they're wasps, which is actually worse. So I need to clean everything up. I need to literally do dishes. I could actually take the dishes somewhere else and do them though. Um, I need, but the big thing is, is I can't put anything away until the stove is not hot. I would actually want to put the stove down on the ground in the shade because right now it's kind of in the half sun. But right now I can, and I need to put away the leftovers. I can actually see the flying, biting things over them. <sighs> this is actually one of the reasons, like one of my problems with cooking with beef is I find it attracts more bugs. So I'm glad I did it. I don't regret doing it right now. Um, and then I'll reheat the food, but then I probably won't use ground beef for a while. I'm thinking in the winter it'll be fine, right? Because it won't be that bees and wasps out, they'll be asleep, I'm thinking. But in the summer, maybe it's other meats instead of ground beef. Ground beef is just, it's so, it's a really, in, it's an inexpensive yet satisfying thing, right? But I'm, I shouldn't be eating it all the time anyway. Not just because of money, but because, you know, you're not supposed to eat a lot of beef for all the different environmental and health reasons. I'm going to try to get the food <laughs> into the leftover things and pack my stuff up. So I talked to a lady who had actually tried to cook here the same spot a couple days ago, or maybe last week, she said, and it was yellow jackets. Yeah. So that's why they were attacking the meat. Yellow jackets attack meat. Anyway, it wasn't just me. Another person had the same problem. One nice thing about being out in the world and cooking out in the world and stuff is like, people kind of randomly talk to you sometimes like, oh, you're cooking food. I don't know. You know. Uh, I interact with people a lot more now than I did when I lived in an apartment. Okay, so I, my stove, which is not a Coleman stove, because I forgot what kind it was, um, 
is still is here because it's still a bit warm and I don't want to push it in the trunk and have it burst into flames. So that's still here. By the way, this thing, I mean, this is thing is decades old. I have dropped it so many times. You can actually see dents on it and stuff. Made in America, built like a tank, which is good because I'm terrible about stuff. My leftovers are here, but not in the fridge because they need to come to room temperature before I put them in the fridge. So one thing that's true, and this is true about a fridge in your house or apartment, is you really shouldn't put hot food in your fridge. You should let it come to room temperature before it goes in the fridge. Otherwise, it makes everything in the fridge warm up. And this is especially important when your fridge is running off of a battery, right? So, I mean, it's important for food safety at any time. So like, this is actually still affirmatively hot. Um, by the way, yes, these are not the best containers. It's literally just the only thing I have right now. Um, my containers that I used in my apartment were glass. And I don't think that's, I mean, I love glass containers, Pyrex for when you're in a house or apartment. I don't think that's the best idea for in a car. I don't know. I'm, I'm still thinking about if that makes sense. But otherwise, I'm going to need to get some containers. And these are the kind of things that your, that food comes in, that turkey lunch meat comes in. So I have a bunch of them. That was very satisfying with the ground beef and sour cream. I enjoyed it a lot. One thing is when you have sour cream, you don't need cheese. Like I think, and I also didn't put salsa in it. Like one of the things is when I lived in a house, I'd want all these different things all the time. I'd always have salsa, probably two different kinds of salsa. I'd always have multiple kinds of hot sauce. Actually, I have two kinds of hot sauce. <laughs> I actually do have two hot sauce in the ground. I'd always have so many different things in the fridge. Now, I do have both guac and sour cream, but I'm thinking in this little bowl, I actually didn't put any hot sauce. I let the sour cream be the main thing and have it in the ground beef for that matter. I just use taco powder. One of the big things I did recently was buying taco powder in a big container instead of buying the pockets because then whatever amount you make, and also it's keeps easier to keep having all these packets you know what I mean okay so what am I gonna do now it is 1207 the library does not open till 1 but I'm thinking I'm going to drive over there and park see if there's parking in the shade and then once the library opens like if it, in an hour hopefully this stuff can go in the fridge this can go in the trunk and I can go work at the library for a while it was something I wanted to get at the, my storage unit and I don't know what it is so I guess I'm not getting it am I don't know it's a mystery I'll figure it out eventually oh I know what it was I wanted to get my jet boil because I can use that to heat up the leftovers and I don't have to get the big Coleman stove and it will be faster and simpler now I've actually never cooked food in it I've only boiled water it should be fine for reading food and I think it would be faster and easier. So that's the thing I can get from my storage unit and put it in my trunk and then I'll have one more way to heat up food. Now when I'm traveling I'm going to use the little thing that plugs into the car and I can heat up food as I'm driving and then when I arrive somewhere it's hot but that doesn't make sense to use when I'm just in town. So that's one thing I'm going to do. I'm not going to be cooking here other food again for a while until like the winter because they sucked, but I got it done. All right, later. Yeah, so I put away all my clothes, I reorganized my trunk, and yeah, I'm in a much better place with everything to be getting ready for the trip. I'm not gonna, there's a whole lot of stuff that has to go in the car, a whole lot of stuff that has to go in the car, but I will do that on Thursday. I've been making a list of all the things that I need from my storage unit and also that I need to buy and I need to pack, etc. And eventually I'm gonna create an actual checklist that will be things I'm gonna always get from my storage unit every time I go on a trip. And right now it's just on a piece of paper and then I'll realize things that I forgot to bring with me, etc. And then it'll be this checklist of everything to do. And then also things to do, like I'm gonna go get my oil changed, you know, I'm gonna, I already refilled all my prescriptions, you know, all those things that have to get done before you go on a, on a trip, even if you live in your vehicle. I mean, one of the nice things is since I live in here, I actually have a whole lot of stuff I don't have to pack that's already in here. It makes it a lot simpler, but a lot of things that have to be done or that I have to get from my storage and a little bit of shopping that I'm going to do. Like I will say it has been nice to have a fridge today. You'll be able to cook food and have leftovers and know that I have those leftovers to eat for my hot meal the rest of the week. And I don't have to actually make a hot meal from scratch the rest of the week. I can just, I can just reheat that and eat that. 
and I have stuff for sandwiches. I need to buy some more bread, but I have bread for today at least. And yeah, it's just really nice to not to be able to utilize that. I also got some stuff like I got butter, vegan butter. So that'll be nice to have toast that I'm hopefully going to be able to pull off making toast just on my pan. I use my new pan. Pan. I have a pan and a, well, actually I have a whole set, but I'm bringing along with me a pan and like a skillet and a pot that have the removable handle. So it's much easier and they both use the same lid. So since I have, I bought both because then I can actually use both burners. And sometimes I'm going to make something that requires both burners. There's a fly that is just making me crazy. So I'm, I'm really feeling good about, about having the, the fridge, even though it's not really an accurate representation of what it's going to be like, because it still has a whole bunch of frozen water in it. And I, but I actually think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep those frozen water bottles, which will eventually not be free water bottles in there. And then we'll take them in and out as the fridge, well, as I eat food in the fridge and it's not as full. So one of the things that's actually hard is organizing the fridge because anytime you have one of those fridges, that's a top down fridge that is like a how cooler is everything's just kind of piled up in there. I may switch where the fridge and the battery are to make it easier to access. I haven't decided that yet. Um, right now, it seems like it's, it seemed like this was a better solution because of the other stuff that I have, but, and also I need to make sure that they both have adequate venting, especially when they're actually on. It has kicked on a little bit today because my battery had, was down to 98%, you know? So it, like it kicked on like once or twice or something like that. So if it has so much frozen stuff in there, it doesn't really need to kick on very often. <sighs> so I'm thinking when I'm traveling that the stuff I'm gonna keep inside the cabin, the fridge and the, the fridge and the battery, big battery, obviously all my CPAP stuff and my junk basket and all that stuff. But I think I'm gonna keep my clothes in here because that will be, you know, the easiest thing to keep and move around when I go to sleep or if I want to lounge in here. One thing I haven't really figured out yet is what do I do when it rains and I'm traveling? Because if I'm in town and it's raining, I can just go into somewhere most of the time. But if I'm out camping or whatever, I'm going to be stuck in the car. I mean, I can still make a sandwich and all that kind of stuff, but I have to get into the trunk. I have to get out. Like that was one of the things I'd hoped I was going to be able to have a pass through like the pass through here just isn't big enough to be able to be have it be usable at all. That would be one nice thing about having a different kind of car, like having a Super Outback, my car that I hope to get eventually, is that I could access the whole thing from in here. Right, I'm going to go and download some books to my Kindles to start getting my Kindle ready for traveling and relax. Okay, so I actually decided to lower it to the set point of being 36 because it lets it go too warm. So right now this says it's 52 and 48. That's like way too warm. It says it's 40, but I don't know where it's measuring in there. My new thing is still coming to temp, but so yeah, I set down to 36 so it'll kick on. Look at the volts, 12 volts. I don't know where. Oh, there it goes, 39. Okay, it's actually doing something. Huge lot and someone parks right next to me. Like, like I just don't understand. Okay, so the car is on and 100 watts are going into that battery and 50 watts are going out to the fridge. So that's totally fine. That runs forever that way if the car is actually running. So I actually set the temperature down to 36 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 40 because it tends to like, I, I have thermometers in there and it's letting it get too warm. I want the temperature to be in there actually to be 40. <laughs> it was getting to be higher than 40. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna set, set it at 36 and then it'll go down and you know have that be the set point that goes up and down. I'm gonna try that and see how it goes. And hopefully it will actually be okay tonight doing that. We'll see how much it has to turn on. It, the thing is, it's gonna be pretty cool tonight. It's gonna be in the 50s. So generally speaking, it shouldn't stay to, like it shouldn't have to kick on that much. I also put the insulated bag on it. Who knows if that actually will make a huge difference or not, but I, it, it has like a layer of insulation and has like silvery thing, you know. So hopefully that will make some of a difference. It actually doesn't work how I kind of would want to. 
I actually, you have to unzip the top to open the, open it. It does, I thought it was going to have like a separate flap for the thing that the lid that opens, but you have to actually unzip it. So I'm not that happy about that, but it looked like it was the only one currently being sold on Amazon for this particular model. So that's what I did. So it is 7.34 and my watch, and my, yeah, it's actually 7.32 that my car is always a little bit fast and I reset it all the time. So I also went to the bathroom when I was in Staples, so that's nice. <laughs> so now I need to just effectively pass the time until I go to bed. This is actually one of those things when I'm in town that can be a big problem because once it gets to be, you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock at night and it's starting to get dark, it's now at 7.30, then it's like I don't really utilize that time that well. I'm kind of just passing the time before I can go to sleep. So this is something that I kind of want to do better at is really have that time be part of my life. I think when I'm traveling, it won't be a problem. It's more like when I'm here in town, because now I'm just like, like this is the time of day where I can't get stuff done. I can, I don't like to work this late at night, so I wouldn't be editing video or answering emails or something this late at night. I really don't like that, but more just like, you know, making sure that I'm not just, like I'm actually enjoying these hours each day and I'm not just passing the time until sleep every night because that's not a good way to live. All right, I'm going to get out of this parking lot. The store is going to close in 25 minutes. I like to be in parking lots where the stores are open. So that way it's normal to be in that parking lot. So I'm going to go to a different place. I haven't, I actually am for going the last bathroom before I go to bed. I think I'll probably go to Target because I actually need to get some stuff from Target. So that will work out well, but I have to pass the time before then. So, okay. So now I have the, <laughs> the temperature alarm going off. Okay, good, it stopped. I'll look at it later. I have it set with low and a high. So it actually made it go down to 34, but the temperature reading actually read, uh, my thermometer said 32. So it's one of the we weird things is in a fridge, it actually doesn't matter what temperature the air is. It matters what temperature the stuff in your fridge is, right? So... I tended to always have my fridges be set a bit lower, like on the cold side. I don't have any milk or anything like that. So, if, you know, I'm not like super worried about, you know, when milk would get ice crystals in it because I don't, I don't drink milk and I rarely ever have, will have, would have milk. I might someday decide to buy like cream or something so I can make cream based sauces, but that's not something I'm doing anytime, anytime soon. I think for my trip, I'm going to focus on things like that are similar to stuff that I've been eating, except better versions of it, <laughs> you know, so having things like tacos and I can even make quesadillas if I got cheese, obviously, uh, I don't have any cheese right the second, but I, you know, tacos and quesadillas and burritos and burrito bowls and all those kind of Mexican food things. And then having all kinds of different stir fries, Indian food, you know, things with rice, generally speaking. I think I'm going to bring a little bit of pasta and a bit of tomato sauce because I have like a little can of tomato sauce um, because sometime I might want to make a, you know, a pasta, an Italian pasta, just to taste something different because I have noticed that I've gotten really sick of the same flavor profiles over and over again. I'm really glad that I cleaned all out or reorganized the trunk because I have a much better idea of what's in there and what's not. And then I'm going to pull out my big food container that's really all the hot food that I cook and look it through the stuff that I already have in my, in not, it's not in my storage, it's in somebody's garage. That is all if I pull out my pantry and then figure out what I actually want to take with me on this trip. There's, I definitely want to have rice with me. I and lentils and I'm going to think about whether or not I'm up for doing dried beans. Not that that's hard, but I'm not going to like have my pressure cooker with me or anything. So I do have a, a real pressure cooker, one that can go on a, a stove top, an old fashioned pressure cooker. And I think that would be a great thing to cook with, but I have to bring it with me. And it's really big. So I don't know if it would even remotely fit. <laughs> <laughs> in so we'll see how this fridge is oh one of the things i i real noticed is i felt this little jiggle in my seat earlier today and i was like what was that i now realize it is the compressor kicking off in the fridge it makes this seat jiggle because that's where the fridge is it's against the seat so that was kind of funny now i've realized what that is so i feel okay about the fridge as far as the fridge working i have two different thermometers in there i have one that i just got today and it's like i got a probe that goes in 
And then uh, also I have the one that was my significant other that was in their fridge. And now I have it in here just to like see. They're they're actually giving now about the same temperature. So that's good. I have to figure out what I want the, the alarms at. Because I don't necessarily want alarms going off all the time. But all right. I'm going to relax. Later.